Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem with complex numbers. What is a locus problem? We'll talk about it. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics and ask a lot of questions. If you like algebra, number theory and trigonometry problems, check out cyber math, my very first channel, cyber with an S. Great, now we have a problem that we need to solve graphically. Why? We're looking for a complex number whose real part of its reciprocal is less than or equal to one half. So the set of complex numbers that satisfy this inequality because it's not an equation is going to lie on a curve. But when I say curve, it could also be a straight line, a line segment, so on and so forth. But we're just gonna call them in general curves. How do you find that? Just by solving for z, but this is not an equation, it's an inequality. And since z as a complex number can be written in standard form as a plus bi, which is also the name of this channel, right? we can replace z with a plus bi. And that should give us an inequality in a and b, in two variables. So we have to be careful, we're kind of solving this in 2D, right? But wait a minute. If you're dealing with a locus problem, do not use a plus bi. Sorry about that a plus bi, don't be offended, no offense. But since it's a locus problem, we should go with x plus yi instead. And why is that? because this represents on the coordinate plane some type of inequality or equation or any type of curve, right? And inequality has a meaning, we'll talk about that as well, and I'll show you a couple graphs. I think a solution from or from alpha and something that we can kind of look at, okay? So, in general, when you have a locus problem, either an equation or an inequality, Replace z with x plus yi, and then just solve whatever you have. Let's do it. Now, we are dealing with the real part. What is the real part, right? If you have a complex number like x plus yi, or it could be a plus bi, the real part is x. So the real part of z in this case is going to be x. And y would be the imaginary part, because it is multiplied by i to give you that imaginary component. If you think about it in the coordinate system, that basically represents two coordinates or a point or a vector, right? And we all can also talk about an angle, theta. We can also talk about the absolute value of z, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is its distance from zero. So this is the real axis. This is the imaginary axis for obvious reasons, right? Great. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can go from this to that. But wait a minute. The real part of z is x, not the real part of 1 over z. Is the real part of 1 over z 1 over x then? No. We don't have any rule that says real part of 1 over z is equal to 1 over real part of z. Well, this might be true for some complex numbers, by the way. And guess what? This might just make another video. Maybe I'll make a video about this because this looks like an interesting problem. But anyways, let's get back to what we have. We're going to replace z with x plus yi. So we're going to have real part of 1 over x plus yi is less than or equal to 1 over 2. So you might be thinking... If this represents a curve, what does less than or equal to represent? If the equal sign represents the curve, less than or equal to can represent two different things. For example, if you're graphing something like, let's keep something simple, y is less than or equal to x. y equals x represents a straight line, like this, right? y is less than or equal to x means all the points that are on one side of the line such that the y coordinate is always less than or equal to x. So basically you're looking at this half plane. So 
inequalities can represent half of something. Like in this case, it's a half plane. It doesn't have to be a plane. It could also be the outside of something or the inside of something. What do I mean by that? For example, if you have a parabola, it could mean inside the parabola or outside the parabola, depending on how it works, right? So we're going to make it work. To make it work, we need to simplify what's inside the parentheses, this guy right here. How do you simplify that? Let's do it here. We have 1 over x plus yi. We're going to multiply by the complex conjugates, which is x minus yi over x minus y. I'm actually multiplying by 1, which doesn't really change it, but it changes it in a way that doesn't change it. Like, kind of weird, right? But anyways, this gives us x minus yi divided by, when you multiply two of these things, you get sum of two squares. And yes, sum of two squares can be factored in the complex word because the complex word is awesome. If you want to go to the algebraic word, you can check out cyber math again. Just a quick reminder. And you can also become a member to support the channel. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we can now split it up because we have the real part and the imaginary part. And this is great because you know what? We do need the real part of this number, right? So the real part of this number is this one. Great. So this is real part of 1 over z. And we want that to be what? Less than or equal to 1 half. Great. So this turns into an inequality, like I said earlier, an inequality in two variables. Can we solve it? Yes. But you're not going to get a solution like x is less than something or y is less than something, but more like a region that we can express by shading. I'll show you what that means if this is too confusing. Now, notice that x squared plus y squared cannot be negative, right? Obviously. And it can only be zero if x and y are both zero. But if x and y are both zero, that means you're dealing with zero, but zero does not have a reciprocal, so this would be meaningless. Does that make sense? So we guarantee that x and y are not both zero. Great. Now, what can we do then? We can just multiply both sides by x squared plus y squared. Let's do it. x squared plus y squared and x squared plus y squared. Beautiful. When we do that, this is going to cancel out. And now we can multiply both sides by 2. Again, this is good because this will give us 2x and the 2 and 1 half are going to cancel out. Leaving us with something like this. 2x is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. Great. Now you might be thinking, okay, x squared plus y squared looks like a circle, isn't it? Like x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle with center at the origin and radius 2. You should know this, right? But wait a minute, we also have 2x. Does that mean a circle is greater than something? Maybe, maybe not. You have to look at the whole thing, kind of like a holistic approach. So let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side. And we're going to left with 0. We're going to be left with 0 when we do that. And let's kind of switch sides. It's not like switching sides, but writing it differently. I just want to write it like this. So now our inequality, because from this perspective, our expression, the variable expression, is greater than or equal to zero. No more or less than. Isn't that great? Now, it is great. I mean, literally. Now, what do you do with this? Well, again, I want to stick to the fact that this looks like a circle, but it needs some working. So let's go ahead and do this. We have x squared minus 2x, which can be completed to a square. How? Well, I can kind of move things around a little bit. Maybe I can just move this piece to make some room. And is that what I wanted? Yeah, probably. Let's go ahead and add one to this and one to this. Beautiful. You know why? Because this becomes a perfect square, which is x minus one quantity squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to one. Now, if you had this, what would that be? This would be a circle. Yes, again, still a circle. Do you know why? Because this would be a circle with center, oops, center at 1, 0, and radius is 1. How do I know that? The general formula, let me write it down for you. x minus h quantity squared 
plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. The center is going to be at h comma k, and r is the radius. Okay, that's it. That's the equation of a circle, and this is the equation of a circle. But we are looking at something that is greater than this. So is it inside the circle or outside the circle? What do you think? First, we got to draw the circle. So center at 1 comma 0. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. I think we have a coordinate system, maybe? Well, first of all, if you ask this question to Wolfram Alpha, it'll give you this. Why? It's kind of treating the absolute value as the real value, the absolute value. But we're dealing with complex numbers. Wait a minute, did I say absolute value? Well, that's not what I meant. I meant, I think it's treating Z as a real number. But I don't know what this means. Something like that. Anyways, now the final answer, which is the same thing as we found, obviously, what does this look like? A good answer, right? So it's the solution set such that this is satisfied. But what is that supposed to mean? It just means the circle, not the circle itself, not inside, but on the outside. So, oops, I don't want to extend it inside. Or should I say intent? Okay. It should be the outside of the circle. Any point on the outside of the circle, by the way, including the circle, because we're dealing with greater than or equal to an equal sign represents the green circle. Okay? I don't think I have anything else. That should be it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then... Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and bye bye.